easy to make a man, or a woman for that matter, kill another human being. Is it fear, anger, greed, jealousy? <laughs> well, one thing's for sure. No one could have foreseen the strange event that will happen one dark spring evening at the home of the elderly Mrs. Gagarin and her son Victor. No, indeed. It took the world's greatest detective to unravel the complexities of that most foul and unnatural of murders. Now, I hope the amateur sleuths amongst you, not least of all those who've arrived late, <laughs> will try to solve the mystery. After all, all the clues will be laid out in front of you. But before you do, let me just give you a few hints. Don't believe everything you hear. Don't always expect a murderer to tell the truth. And above all, you've got to know who's who. Oh look, it's getting dark, just like it was on that dark spring evening when the elderly Mrs. Gagarin decided to take a walk in her garden. Could she have known then? She'd be the subject of the Vector Drake last case. <laughs> to wait, Sergeant. Uh, sorry, sir. Missed that bit, sir. How much longer we have to wait, Sergeant? Oh, Inspector Drake will be here as soon as possible, sir. Uh, try to be a little patient. <laughs> <laughs> Something amusing you, Sergeant. I was just thinking, sir. <laughs> try to be a little patient, as the doctor said to the midget. <laughs> yes, well, forgive me if I don't join in a hearty giggle, Sergeant, but my mother has just been shot dead. <laughs> Oh, no offence intended, sir. Can I go now, Sergeant? Oh, afraid not, Miss. Inspector gave strict instructions. No one was to leave this room until he arrives. What's he like anyhow, Miss Inspector? Uh... Uh, Drake. Oh, he's the best there is, sir. Don't you fear he's the best there is. And I should know, I've worked with them all in my time, you know. Sexton Blake, Miss Martle. Danger Mouse. <laughs> Oh, I'm very impressed, Sergeant. Next, you'll be telling us you've worked with Sherlock Holmes. Oh, well, only in a strictly advisory capacity, Miss, but have you no fear whatsoever? Inspector Drake's the best. The question is, can we find my mother's killer? Well, if he can't, sir, no one can. It's his mind, see? So quick. I mean, next to him, I'm no more than, than an imbecile. Really? <laughs> True as I'm standing here. Can you imagine that, Miss? I think so, Sergeant. Yes. <laughs> we must talk. Try to stay nonchalant. Look at us, old stick. I think it might be wise if we played down our relationship in front of this Drake fellow. What relationship? That's the ideal thing. After all, we both had a lot to gain from our mother's death, and our friend the inspector might start to get the wrong idea. But we've nothing to hide. Well, of course not. But it's common knowledge that there was no love lost between Mother and me. And, well, it seems silly to complicate the investigation. Don't worry, Victor. Mum's the word. <laughs> Very droll, my sweet. Sergeant, why on earth is that inspector of yours? He's been here almost an hour. Oh, I've told you what, sir. He'll be here as soon as he can. <laughs> why, that'll be him arriving now. <laughs> Ah, Inspector Duck! I tried to warn you, Inspector, that old deer catches a lot of people out. And you are? <laughs> and you are? Victor Gagarin. Mrs. Gagarin was my mother. My well, condolences, Mr. Gestapo. Gagarin. Your mother, you say? That's correct, Inspector. 
You no know, point in lying to me over little things like that, eh, Mr. Dustbin? The name's Gagarin. Victor Gagarin. Yes, yes, of course it is. Get that fingerprinted, Sergeant. Do you, sir? <laughs> <laughs> It must have been a great shock to find her dead. Well, it was certainly unusual. What's that you're standing on? Uh, those are my feet, Inspector. Make a note, Sergeant. We have got, I say, comedian amongst us. Sure. Let's try that again, shall we? What's that you're standing on? The rug? Oh, well, that's a rug, Inspector. I see. Move your foot. What? Very interesting. What is it? It's my finger. Sergeant, remove the rug for questions. <clears throat> yes, sir. What? Oh, day, that's a valuable person rug. It could also be a valuable clue, Mr. Grappling Irons, and you'll soon learn that nothing escapes my notice. Nothing. For instance, I have already noticed <laughs> that you are gradually <laughs> getting taller. <laughs> Put the rug back, Sergeant. Yes, sir. I should like to start by questioning the staff. <coughs> what, this all stick? The servants, Mr. Grobag. Oh, I see, very well. Uh, this is the butler. <laughs> yes, I had a hunch you'd show up. Inspector Drake, can we get on, please? Look, if you did it, you may as well tell me now. Save us all a lot of time. <laughs> what's your name? I said, what's your name? Is this man still alive? You'll have to <laughs> shout, Inspector. Butler! What, 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 what is it, Inspector? Stay out of this, I'll come to you later. <laughs> Inspector, that's one of my mother's guests. His name is Butler. So what's the butler's name? Guest. <laughs> <laughs> Make a note of that, Sergeant. Yes, sir. This is the cook. This is the gardener, rather, Mr. Cook. Any do, sir. Delighted. And this is the cook, Mrs. Gardener. <laughs> and what's your name, Mrs. Gardener? Mrs. Gardener, sir. So there are two Mrs. Gardeners. I think not, Inspector. Don't play games with me, Mr. Gooseflesh. Sergeant, read back the list of suspects. Yes, sir. Let me see. Uh, well, I've got to guess the butler, cook the gardener, garden the cook, and butler the guest. <laughs> and you are? Duck. <laughs> Alison Duck. What are you doing down there, Inspector? Uh, examining your shoes, Mrs. Duck. Miss? Oh, I see. Uh, that's very interesting. This mud on your heel is not the same colour as the mud in the garden. No, that's dog poo. I trod on it outside. <laughs> Thank you for removing it. My pleasure. I'm Mrs Gagarin's business partner. Well, that is to say, she was mine. And exactly what line of business are you in, Miss Duck? Clothes, Inspector. Fashion. I'm a designer. Do you like it? Take that down, Sergeant. Yes, sir. <laughs> My mother provided the money to set up the business inspector. She too recognised Miss Duck's talent. And you are? Victor Gagarin. We have been introduced. Oh, yes. The man's an idiot. Oh, I think he's rather cute. He can't even get my name right. He's had a nasty blow to the head. That's undoubtedly the least important part of his old body. Don't underestimate him. I bet he's working on some ingenious theory right now. Inspector? Yes? Why do you think somebody would want to murder a frail, defenceless and disgustingly rich old woman? At this stage, Miss Duck, I'm guessing, but... I think someone wanted her dead. 
Yes, but why should someone want her dead? Let's not play with words, Mr Gibberish. This was murder, pure and simple. I think what they're trying to say, Drake, old chap, is have you any idea as to the motive? And who the hell are you? Uh, that's a butler, sir, the guest. Then this must be guest the butler. Oh, well done, Inspector. We're all getting the hang of this now. Right, what was your question again, Mr Guest? Another question. Don't waste my time, butler! That's guest. I'm butler. <laughs> Stay out of it. I'll come to you later. Oh. You, Mrs... Uh... Duck! Yeah, duck! <laughs> That most catches a lot of people out. That's Mrs. Gardner, sir, the cook. Of course it is. Now, Mrs. Gargoyle. Gardner. No, I'll come to him later. How long were you in the employ of Mrs. Gritsniffer? How long was I in what, sir? How long did you work for the old woman? Up until she died. <laughs> Question. Did Mrs. Garvin, Gobstopper, or whatever her name was, know who her killer was? Oh, I should imagine she was the only one who did, Inspector. Precisely. And there's your motive. I'm sorry, Inspector, but that gazelle-like mind of yours has left us all behind again. Forgive me. I sometimes forget that my brain works at a different speed to that of a normal person. That's true. It's obvious, isn't it? Sergeant, explain it to him. Uh, um, uh, well, uh, oh, oh dear. Are you all right, Sergeant? Oh, I, I just need a breath of fresh air. <laughs> oh dear me. Right, try and stay with me. Mrs. Gobstuffle was the only one who knew who her killer was, right? Right. 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 So that's why you had to kill her. To shut her up! <laughs> but until he killed her, there was nothing to shut her up for. You stick to making pretty dresses, Miss Duck, and leave the murder investigations to me. So you think he killed her because she was the only witness to her own murder? <laughs> exactly! You ever thought of joining the force, Mr. Floor Gripper? The name's Gagarin! And if I ever have a frontal lobotomy, I'll let you know. <laughs> well, I've got a job to do. We're going to go over this again and again until I get some answers. I want all of you to tell me exactly what happened here tonight. Let's start with you, Mr. Guest Butler. So you know there's nothing unusual here tonight. <laughs> Is there anyone else in this house apart from us here? No one. A cleaning lady, a maid or something? I said there's no one else here, Inspector. <laughs> Just after 11, sir. This clock has stopped. Ah! A bullet! It must have strayed through the French windows during the shooting, Mr. Globule. I presume you're talking to me. How long has this clock been stopped like this? Well, since it's now about 11, I'd say an hour. <laughs> Make a note, Sergeant. Yes, sir. That means the shooting must have taken place about, uh, ten o'clock. Three minutes past, I'd say, Inspector. You seem very well informed, Mr. Bullocks. Butler. No, I'll come to him later. <laughs> Tell me, where were you at three minutes past ten precisely? If you must know, I was playing bridge. Alone? Of course not. <laughs> and how many others were playing with you? 
Do you play bridge, Inspector? Just answer the inspector's questions, will you? Three others. Mr. Gagarin, Miss Duck, and... And? Uh, and, and, and Mrs. Gardner. Uh, Mrs. Gardner's a cook, sir. A cook? The cook often played with the guests. Oh, that was my idea, Inspector. You see, my mother was due to be the fourth player, but she complained of a headache and said she preferred to go for a walk instead. So I asked Gardner, the cook, to be a guest. <laughs> well, I see. You, Mr Cockroach. Cook. No, I'll come to that later. Tell me, where were you at 10.03 tonight? I were in Cook's quarters. You were in your quarters? No, I were in Cook's quarters. You were in the quarters of the cook, Mrs. Gaybird. That's right. She were making me a snack of tomato soup. When I heard the gunshot, I spilled some down my shirt. Yes, I didn't notice the stains. Sergeant? The shirt. Yes, sir. Come on. Right. Let's start your story again, shall we? Told you, I don't know nothing. Oh, you don't know nothing. That means you do know something. Oh, don't you start that double negative crap with me. <laughs> <laughs> the blood on your shirt. Tomato soup. Blood. Tomato soup. Blood. Tomato soup. Tomato soup. Blood. Aha! <laughs> All right, so it's blood. No big deal. I got the stain doing a job for a mate of mine. What kind of job? Pheasant blocking. You don't look like a pheasant plucker to me. <laughs> I'm not a pheasant plucker, I'm a pheasant plucker's mate. So why are you plucking pheasants? I'm a pheasant plucker who are late. <laughs> I am inclined, Mr Cockrell, not to believe the words you said. All right, I'll give in. The stains are, in fact, tomato soup. I stain my shirt when I'm in Cook's quarters. That's more like it. Why don't you just spill the beans, Cook? We're an eating beans. <laughs> We're eating tomato soup. Isn't it stimulating to see the meeting of two great minds? <laughs> You're not allowed in Cook's quarters, Cook. What's the meaning of this? How's your old tricks again, eh? You know what Mother said? Yes, yes. You mean? Yes. What? What? What do you mean? Thought you knew. I was bluffing. Oh, for heaven's sake, I'll tell you, Inspector, we'll be here all night. Some weeks ago, Cook and Garden were found together in Cook's quarters, canoodling. Canoodling? <coughs> it's like a small boat, sir. Very, <laughs> very popular with the Eskimos, I understand. Sergeant, that's canoeing. They were found canoeing in Cook's quarters? <laughs> no, no, Inspector, they were having an affair. Actually, it's called a kayak. An affair's called a kayak? <laughs> no, small boat that popular with the Eskimos. <laughs> You've got all this, Sergeant. Well, I think so, sir. Let me see. Uh, cook the Gardener was plucking pheasants, while Gardener the Cook was eating tomato soup and some Eskimos in a kayak. Or, or some such affair. And, Let's uh, just say that they were found at the creek without a paddle, and Mother threatened to sack them if they were caught at it again. Aha! Uh -huh. Makings of a motive. Are you threatening me with murder? I don't know, who are you? Cook the gardener. Then I might be. Stick around. Right, let's examine what we have here. We have an old woman murdered just after 10 o'clock. A business partner who stands to inherit a profitable fashion business. A son who stands to inherit a considerable personal fortune. Two canoeists who are having an affair. <laughs> and you, Mr. Bumpler, what is your motive? All right. I, I can't stand it anymore. Mrs. Gagarin was blackmailing me. <clears throat> Blackmail's a good looking word, Mr. Butler. Ugly, Sergeant. Sorry, sir? Blackmail is an ugly word. Oh, right, sir. <laughs> but why? 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 Yes, yes why, 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 why? Why? Delilah Gagarin was my old <laughs> <laughs> And one day she caught me behind the bike sheds with a girl called Mary Ship. Mary Ship? The vicar's daughter? Yes. 
Mary Ship. So you're butler the scuttler. She swore she'd never tell no one. <laughs> you're a sick man, you are, sir. You deserve everything you get. I didn't see that, Sergeant. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I'll do it again. Sergeant. That's why I came here tonight, just like I've been doing for the last 20 years. How do you think she became so rich? She was a parasite, living off the one mistake I ever made when I was only eight years old. <laughs> There's your motive, Inspector! There's your murderer! You seem to forget one thing, Mr Gangreen. At the time of the murder, you claimed Mr Butane here was playing bridge with you. I uh, wasn't paying that much attention to the game. <laughs> oh, well, no wonder we lost the first rubber. The first rubber duck? It's a technical term in bridge, Sergeant. Rubber duck's a technical term in bridge? Just rubber, Sergeant, just rubber. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid this is going to be a bit painful, Mr. Gobstopper. All right, let's get it over with. I'm going to have to ask you for a positive identification. I'm ready. That's Max Bygraves. Well done. OK, take her out. <laughs> Interesting. It seems that just before she died, Mrs. Gorgon's owner scraped two letters in the gravel. A L. A L. Alexander. Alexander, guess the butler. Well, well, well. Alexander, you little dark horse, you. <laughs> Be murdering old women without telling us, have you? What? <laughs> Never mind. It seems to me that this particular old woman is unlikely to refer to her own butler by his Christian name. However, Alison Duck. Oh, really, this is preposterous. Anyone could have scraped those letters there to put the blame on me. <coughs> She's right, sir. Is she? Is she now? Let's find out, shall we? Sergeant? The lie detector. Yes, sir. A lie detector? A little invention of my own. You've nothing to fear if you're telling the truth. <laughs> Forget it, Sergeant. You'll never make it stand up in court. <laughs> Get rid of it, Sergeant. <clears throat> Most of the evening? I did come down to serve drinks to Mrs Gagarin and her guests around nine. And what time was this? Around <laughs> nine. <laughs> I see. Well, go on. Well, Mrs Gagarin complained of a headache. Whose? Her own. <laughs> Got that, Sergeant? Uh, Sergeant, uh, it's better I film this. Ignore it, Sergeant. It's probably a red herring. Oh, right, <laughs> Please continue, Mr. Ghost. Well, Mr. Gagarin... Ghost. 
suggested I go and get some <laughs> aspirins from the chemist. Oh, from the chemist, eh? <laughs> at nine o'clock at night! Oh, yes, Inspector, those are our next door neighbours, Mr. and Mrs. Chemist. <laughs> I see. Carry on, butler. But, but, um, but what, uh, what, what, I wasn't paying attention. Where, where, where are we? Shut up! You! Had you no aspirin in the house? Well, I thought we had, but I must have been mistaken. When I came back from next door, Mrs Gagarin was dead. Oh, so you were too late with the aspirin then, sir? <laughs> <laughs> She'd been shot, Sergeant! Uh, right. Who did it? I don't know. Oh, come now, Mr. Gonads. You must have known the old woman better than anyone. Surely you've got a little hunch. <laughs> <laughs> you must at least have heard the gunshots. What? Forget it. You would never have heard the shots anyway, Inspector. Our next door neighbours are seven miles away. See? I don't envy your rates bill, Mr. Jaro Chip. We get by. You don't seem to remember much about your game of bridge. Were you actually playing when the shots rang out? Oh, no, Inspector, that much I can remember. When I heard the shots, I was on the phone to the sergeant here, pledging my annual donation to the police ball. Well, that's right, sir. I've got a little note of it here somewhere. I heard a shot in the background, there was a scream, and then Mr. Gagarin told me to go and get help right away. And what time is this? Uh, uh, just after ten, sir, just like we figured. Very generous of you to pledge your donation once again, Mr. Gangly Legs. Not at all, Inspector. It's obvious your balls need a bit of support. <laughs> Any time I can lend a helping hand. <laughs> yes, well, thank you, Mr. Genitals. <laughs> uh, <coughs> leaving us, Miss Duck, are you? Well, it's been a very tiring day, and I'm tired, so if you'll, you'll excuse me, I'm turning in. I invited Miss Duck to stay the night, Inspector. I thought it might uh, simplify your investigation. I'll get you, sir. In fact, you must all stay here this evening. It's far too late to go back to Scotland Yard. It's very hospitable of you, Mr Gladiator. But we policemen don't actually live at Scotland Yard, you know. It's not like Trumpton. <laughs> <laughs> Sergeant? It's for you, sir. What is it? Uh, it's a telephone, sir. <coughs> Excuse me, Mr. Goblin. Chief Inspector, yeah. Thank you. the forensic report? It appears the bullets were fired by some kind of gun. My God. The modern criminal mind doesn't stand a chance with these new laboratory techniques. <laughs> Stick at it, boys. This could change everything. Inspector, would you mind if we went to bed now? Madam, I hardly know you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that we'd all like to go to bed, Inspector. We're all very tired. Guests will prepare a room for you and the sergeants. That is, if you decided to stay. Very well. But I'd like to see you all in here again tomorrow at 9am. In the morning. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. I'll show you to your room. No. We'll sleep here. Here? Here. Here. Here? Here. 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 Here? I'm getting a little bored with this conversation, Sergeant. Here, here, will that be all, sir? Yes, thank you, Mr. Geriatric. Good night. Tell me, sir, which side of the floor do you normally sleep on? <laughs> Don't make a fuss, Sergeant. We're going to. Could be a lot of valuable clues in this room. We're going to make sure that no one sneaks in here tonight to steal them. Oh. 
I'm with you, sir. Yes, Sergeant. Unfortunately, you are. Tell me, Sergeant, is there a Mrs. Plot? Oh, yes, sir. As a matter of fact, I married her. <laughs> Tell me, Sergeant, when did you first realise you had the brains to be a policeman? Uh, sorry, sir. I don't understand the question. Never mind. Just get some sleep. We've got a big day ahead of us tomorrow. Good night, sir. Good night, Sergeant. Oh. Oh. Sweet dreams. Shut up, Sergeant. No, sorry, sir. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> oh, go on, give us another one. A big, wet, juicy kiss. Go on. Sorry, Sorry. blast! Sorry, what? Kindly you remove your hands and get a grip on yourself. Oh. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, sir. I haven't been feeling myself lately. <laughs> well, that's no reason to start on me. Uh, sorry, sir. Good night, sir. Yes, good night, Sergeant. Uh, oh, oh. Sweet dreams. Just shut up, Sergeant! Uh, sorry, sir, sorry, sir. Shh. Someone's coming! Uh, it's not me, sir. <laughs> in the morning, sir. Sergeant, the curtains. Sir. Here they are, sir. Did you happen to notice what was on the other side of them, Sergeant? He's right, sir. It's morning out there. <laughs> yes, well, here you go. You may go. I don't, I don't trust that man, sir. Tell me, how many murder cases have you been on in all your years? Let me see now. 93. 93, eh? And tell me, in how many of those 93 cases has that butler done it? Like what in the movies? No, he's not like the movies, Sergeant. Oh, go on, how many times, sir? 92. 92, eh? And what does that represent to statistically speaking, like, sir? Well, let me see. If we discount this uh, current case, I'd say roughly one in one. Pretty impressive odds, aren't you, sir? I do so much want it not to be the butler. But my money's on the butler, sir. <laughs> it can't be the butler. 40 years I've been doing this job, 40 years, and every time it's the butler, the butler, the butler, the damn butler! Well, not this time, not if I can help it! But he's got to be him, sir. He's the only one what don't have a motive. And he's the only one what weren't there when the murder was committed. It's got to be him. You're depressing me, Sergeant. <sighs> Don't you find it strange, sir, that there was, uh, no aspirin in the house at all? What did he say the next door neighbours were called? Oh, I made a note, sir. Let me see. Here it is. L.G. Chemist.
<laughs> here they are, sir. Here they are. L.G. Kimmy. Brilliant. Only a policeman will look under K for chemist. Got all the number. Right, sir. Yard here. Well, can I speak to you, please? It's another damn butler. Hello? Well, let's see. Uh, no, no, there's no need to get him out of bed. Uh, Do you receive a visitor last night? Uh, guest. No, no, not, not a guest, a butler. No, no, not a Mr. Butler, a Mr. Guest, a butler. No, I have not been drinking. Shall I start again? Damn fool. Look, I am referring to a Mr. Alexander Guest, butler at the household of your next door neighbours, the Glockenspiels. Well, surely you must know him? Don't you people attend union meetings or something? Aha! Uh -huh. And what time did he call to collect these aspirins? I see. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chauffeur. <laughs> yes, thank you. Good boy. So, the butler's alibi is confirmed. Yeah, by another butler called Chauffeur. He's probably a murderer too, sir. They're probably in it together. You mean, two butlers, did he? Oh, uh, I couldn't stand it. I'd resign. Too much for me, that would, I'll tell you now. Uh, I smell a rat, sir. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> Here's the little queer, sir. Ah, this place is filthy. You haven't been clean for months. No real butler would allow house to get this dirty. He's an imposter, sir. I bit my boots on it. He looks pretty real to me. No, sir, the butler, sir. Well, the butler is not real. There's one person in this house who would know. Morning, Inspector. Sergeant, sleep well? No. Yes. Uh, good. I presume guest has offered you tea? No. Yes. Did he? I can't remember, sir. Uh, fine. Good man, that guest. I was very lucky to pick him up at such short notice. Short notice? Yes. One day, my other butler clears off without so much as an hour's notice. <coughs> Next day, up pops guest looking for work. Couldn't believe me luck. When was this? Oh, a couple of months ago. Of course, maybe a while before guest totally settles in. After all, Chauffeur was with us 15 years. Chauffeur? <coughs> yes, Sydney Chauffeur, my old butler. Good man. Couldn't believe it when he just cleared off like that. <coughs> anyway, mustn't stand around here gossiping. Better let you crack on with the investigation. I'll go and drag the others out of bed. <clears throat> Are you thinking, sir, what I'm thinking? I doubt it, Sergeant. <laughs> <laughs> Let's examine the facts. Mrs Gagarin was shot in the cloisters. Uh, well, I haven't examined the body, certainly, uh, personally, like, sir, but it was somewhere in that region. <laughs> um, the report is that there were uh, five bullets. Five? Yes, sir. Two in the back. Two in the chest and one, uh, <coughs> somewhere else, sir. Somewhere else, Sergeant. Yeah. Oh, and one more bullet, sir. Right in the clock. I do wish you wouldn't use such crude language, Sergeant. I know the old woman wasn't exactly good looking, but... No, 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 sir. The clock, sir. Stopped. 10.03. Oh, yes, of course. Six bullets, eh? Someone certainly wanted her dead. But who? Ah, Inspector. Guest told me you'd stay the night. I was, um, hoping to find you alone. Sergeant? Sir? 
You hear that? The young lady was uh, hoping to find me alone. Yeah, it's very unfortunate, sir. Why? <laughs> because we're here too, sir. <laughs> you were here, Sergeant. Uh, when, sir? Just. Uh, when did we leave, sir? Now. <clears throat> oh, I get it. You want me to step outside for a while? Oh, smart man. Well, there's no need to drop in, sir. I mean, when you want me to go, you just say the word. And what is the word? Uh, how do you mean, sir? Sod off. <laughs> I think that was your cue. <clears throat> look, if it's all the same as you, sir, I think I'd like to take a look outside for a while. Good idea, Sergeant. If you need me, I'll be in here. And if you need us, sir, we'll be out there. <laughs> right, Sergeant. Right, sir. Right. Right, sir. Plod just lacks one vital organ. Oh, Inspector Drake. Miss Duck? Birds of a feather, eh, Inspector? Oh, very good, Miss Duck. Oh, but don't you get fed up with the bird jokes? I get them all the time. People ask how I get stockings over my webbed feet. They say, I bet you get up at the quack of dawn. You should hear the restaurant waiters collapse with laughter when I ask for my bill. And then, when I refuse to tip them, they say I'm as tight as a duck's. Can we change the subject, mister? Oh, I am sorry, Inspector. I didn't mean to embarrass you. Oh, but Inspector's so formal. Would you mind if I called you Steve? Not at all. It's better than my real name. And you shall call me Alison. Oh, Steve, you're a man I can trust. Am I a lady you can trust? Uh, Miss Duck, you're squashing my truncheon. Oh, I didn't think inspectors had truncheons. Neither did I. Oh, you don't think this murder had anything to do with little old me, do you? Madam, you are neither old nor little. Oh, Steve, there's something very sharp about you. Uh, that'll be my pencil, Miss. No, it's your mind, Steve. I think we'd better get up now. Someone may come. Oh, no one's likely to come yet. <laughs> You don't know me, Miss Duck. Oh, all right. But before we go, I'm going to steal a kiss. You'd steal from a policeman? Oh, Steve! Help me! You brazen hussy! Oh, you bastard! <laughs> oh. All right, so I'm caught committing a crime of passion. What's my punishment to be, Steve? Stick you, but your name's Cecil, sir. <laughs> Just be quiet, Sergeant Percy Plod. What's it to be, Steve? Torture? Interrogation? Pulling fingernails? The rack? Don't be obscene. The police department stopped using those sort of tactics six months ago. <laughs> September, sir. That's right. Nowadays, we use more subtle methods. It's a battle of wits and intelligence. Oh, and that's where the sergeant's really in a class of his own. Let me put our arms off, sir! Steady, man, steady! Remember the trouble on the picket lines. I didn't have to be a policeman, you know. I was a pretty good concert pianist once. Oh. Yeah, I was. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Duck, a word in your ear. Wax. <laughs> Listen, I am prepared to overlook this obvious attempt to colour my judgement of this case, but I must ask you to... I must ask you to take care with Sergeant Plod. He may be no mental gymnast, but he does have feelings, you know. He's a human being. He's a gorilla. Shh. Sergeant, Sergeant, I'd like to apologise for my earlier remarks. No offence intended. That's all right, miss. Here, have a banana. Oh, thank you very much, miss. It's time the others were here. I'll give them a shout. Would you care to come in? 
Uh, cigarette inspector. Yes, I know. Sit down, Mr. Greystone. You ought to be around my own house if I were a suspect. Everyone in this room is a suspect, Mr. Gobstopper. Someone in this room is a killer. But how can you be so sure it wasn't an outsider? Because, Miss Duck, I think that Mrs. Globetrotter recognised her killer. Recognised her killer? Inspector is very dark that night. There's more than one way to recognise a killer, Mr. Garden, though. She may not have seen his face, but she may have heard his voice and recognised it. You're talking through your hat, Inspector. <laughs> We'll see, Mr. Budrigar, we'll see. Take the stand. Right, do you promise to tell the old truth and the truth and uh, lots and lots of truth and uh, more truth than you can shake a stick at? I do. You say you were being blackmailed by Mrs. Greedy Guts? Yes, the old bag was taking me for a thousand pounds a week. No further questions. You, Mrs. Guard Dog. Me? Come it's on. you! Come on, woman! Take the stand. Tell us your story and take it from the beginning. I, I was born the daughter of a poor farmer. Uh, your father had no money? Oh, no, he had lots of money, but he was a terrible farmer. <laughs> Go on, listen. And my, my father drunk incessantly and continually beat me. Oh, a violent alcoholic. No, no, he drank water and beat me at chess. Oh, go on, man. All I had to my name were my old dishcloths and the clothes I stood up in and the clothes I went out in, and a low-cut dress for special occasions, or oh, in a cheeky little Italian off-the-shoulder number, um, a Land Rover, a few baubles, and the good fortune to be the first ever Pool's jackpot winner. <laughs> <laughs> Poor creature. So how did you become in the employ of Mrs Gagarin? A terrible misfortune. I put everything on a horse and lost it. Ah! So you're a betting lady? No, no, I strapped her to a horse and it ran away. <laughs> and you haven't seen you all since? No, though I have been doing the rounds of all the wealthy estates, checking the stables wherever I go. Who runs the stables here? The Dutchman. Not, Not the, the Dutchman? Dutchman? Yes. Yeah, what's his name, this Dutchman? Van. Uh, full name? Truck Van Rental. <laughs> Tell me, can we speak to him? I uh, sacked him, Sergeant, a week ago. Oh. <clears throat> and why is that? He's mean, he is. Just because Van had a cold, he sacked him. That's not the reason, Mrs Gardner, and you know it. And I won't stand for any more of your impertinence. <clears throat> so what's your side of the story, Mr Gagarin? As I explained to the staff at the time very clearly, I dismissed the stable boy because he was feeling a little hoarse. Same thing. <laughs> You might have antagonised him enough to crave revenge. What are you driving at, Sergeant? <laughs> Murder, Mr Gagarin. Murder. M-U-R-D-A-H. Murder. Objection. Overruled. Answer the question, Mr Gladiator Fever. If he sought the revenge, why should the Dutchman attack my frail old mother, not me? Besides, he was such a quiet, gentle chap. No, it, it, it doesn't seem to add up. <laughs> then my suspicions focus firmly back on you and your colleagues. On the other hand, I always said he was a murderous swine. Yes. Yes. Silence! This is Groveler. You may step down. Mr. Cooking Oil, if you please. Right, Mr. Cooking Stove. You said last night that at the time of the murder, you were in Cook's quarters. She was fixing you and me in a tomato soup just before she was called to play bridge. Later, when the shots rang out, you spilled some soup down your shirt. That's right, my only shirt. Well, we've had that shirt analysed. Sergeant? The results. Yes, sir. First, we tore this badly uh, stained shirt in half, and we washed one half, <laughs> one half in a leading brand washing powder. 
And the other half in bold, newly improved, automatic, the results. Well, I've never seen it so clean. <laughs> that tomato suit were well grimed in. I thought I'd never get the stains out. That's for little Johnny's shorts. Yeah, but what about a low temperature suit? Even better. That suit were hot. The label said not. Sergeant Dodd, sir, have we determined the nature of the stains? Oh, I was just coming to that, sir. I've got a report here. It says, uh, bold automatic is a special laboratory test, you see. <laughs> and a test proved positive. Bold, you must understand, is an anagram. The stains were indeed blood. <laughs> Would you like to change your story, Mr. Crook? Yes, please. Very well. Go on. Oh, I was lying. No, Freddie, don't let them trick you. It's no good, sweetheart. I'll have to tell them everything. <laughs> Lillian Gish made her screen debut in 1912. <laughs> John Keats wrote a poem called Lamia. Turk Village Hall were built in 1928. The bass trombone is equipped with additional tubing. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Clock, but I don't think we've got time for you to tell us absolutely everything. Could we just uh, stick to the events of last night in and around this house? I would have come to that eventually. No doubt. Right. Well, it was just after nine o'clock when Mrs. Gagarin complained of an headache and she decided to take a walk outside. It were a warm evening and she left the French windows open. A lot of funny things had happened that day, and the old woman were in a foul mood with everyone. She caught cooking me canoodling again. She had a row with Miss Duck, something about the accounts. And Mr Butler were here to stay, and them two never got along. She'd even threatened to remove her son from the will. I don't know what that were about, but I heard her on the phone to her solicitor. There was a terrible tension in the air. And then, then it happened. You see, Inspector, I know who killed Mrs. Gagarin. It was... Inspector Drake, Scotty, you are there. Oh, it's you. I thought I told you not to call me when I'm on a case. Yes, yes. I stayed here last night. Of course I'm sure. I didn't go near Mavis Parsons house. Of course I care about you. I can't say that now. All right. You're still Drakey Wakey's little fluffy bottom. <laughs> I don't know. I'll eat it when I get in. Where are the black ones? Yeah, and the suspenders. Get the oil out and I'll bring the, I'll bring the handcuffs. Bye. <laughs> it was your wife, Sergeant. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. Cockerleaky, it appears the others couldn't stand to hear your confession. Come on then, who murdered the old woman? Come on. Out with it. Who did it? Come on. He's been poisoned. <laughs>
Leaky. Come on then. Who killed the old woman, eh? Come on. Out with it. Who did it? He's been shot. That influence of Scotland Yard, you know. My annual donation to the police ball see to that. I'm sure the chief inspector will see reason. After all, he has the reputation of being a fair minded chap. Chief Inspector Bastard, please. <laughs> this is very good of you, Mr. Guillotine. Not at all. Ah, Jack. Jack, it's Victor. How are you? Good, good. I'm fine, thank you. And how are all the little bastards? <laughs> good. Good, I find. Uh, Jack, I was just wondering how the arrangements, arrangements of the police ball were coming along. Excellent. I hope that uh, little cheque for a thousand pounds helped. Yes, uh, yes, I know. I, I thought it better to make it payable to you personally. Cut through the red tape and all that. <laughs> yes, thank you. Oh, Jack, uh, Jack, I almost forgot. There's one thing you could do for me. It's about his... It's about Inspector Drake. Yeah, yes, yes, uh, yes, I know. But, he, but he's making rather good progress here. And I'd hate to see someone as... as Stupid? As able, as able as the inspector, removed from the case. Removed from the case. So I'd consider it a personal favour if you would reinstate him. Right. Right, thank, fa fa thank you, Jack. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. What did he say? You're sacked. Uh, your influence at Scotland Yard is awesome. But you want to finish this case first. Well, well, well. It seems this is to be Inspector Drake's last case. Would you care for a small sherry, Inspector? A special occasion? Oh, just a small one, then. Go on. Oh. Say when. Ah, I'll be fine, thank you. <laughs> Well, bottoms up. Anything wrong, Inspector? Found a clue? Uh, no, 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 just a, just a small hair. <laughs> Mrs. Gardner, there's a small hair in the Inspector's glass. Please fetch him another one. Another small hair? <laughs> you just can't get the staff these days. <laughs> oh, I... Steve, I do like a man who can take his drink. Really? What's his name? George. Inspector Drake, you've been here almost two days now. Do you feel any closer to solving this murder? <coughs> oh dear. Hold that, will you? Oh, oh. oh! Oh, it's the booze. Any minute now, he'll be sick. Oh, my Persian rug! Is he dead? Help us lift him. Is he dead? Help, Help us lift him. him! Is he dead? Help, Help us lift him. him! Is he dead? Get, Get back, back to the hospital, hospital Sergeant! Right. Lean him out the window. That rug cost me an arm and a leg. I'm not going to be sick. I'm not taking any chances. Mrs Gardner, fetch a bucket. Will you listen to me? I'm not going to be sick. Put me down! I've just got a bit of a headache. 
cake. Oh, would you care for an aspirin? Where did you get those? Ah, uh, what? The aspirin. Your butler said you had none in the house. Uh, well, there's an easy explanation. I'm waiting. Uh, yes, Gagarin, we're all waiting. Well, let's hope the phone rings. Victor Gagarin's residence. I think it's for you, Inspector. Who is it? Oh, God knows. Someone whittering around like a deranged madman. Deranged madman? Yes, Sergeant Blood? Oh, good man. Get back here right away. <laughs> Sergeant Blood has just returned from the hospital. Good news. It seems that Mr. Copper Spaniel is going to be all right. Of course, that's not good news for one person here. The one who tried to kill him. Oh, oh good, news. good news. Good news. Good news. news. Good news. Yeah. Excellent news. Good. Great news. Excellent news. Great news. Now, Mr. Guitar Strings, you were explaining about the aspirin. I, uh, I thought you'd forgotten. I'm not as stupid as Sergeant Claude looks. <laughs> I'm sorry, Alexander, old chap. I tried my best to cover for you, but it's, it's all over. The inspector knows you were lying. What? I checked with the next door neighbours. It seems that Mr. Bottle Top here did go to collect some aspirins. He arrived at 9.20 and left a few minutes later. That's guessed. No, that's fact. A good detective never relies on guesswork. Hang on a minute. Old Drake is onto something here. If when the butler got back, the old woman was dead, it must have been after 10 o'clock. So? Well, so he, he took 20 minutes to get next door uh, and 40 minutes to get back. What on earth was he doing? Let me get this clear. You heard the shots at three minutes past 10, and minutes later, the butler returned. I'm afraid so, Inspector. Look, I had a word with Guest myself before he got back. He's got no excuse for where he was last night. He says he came straight back. It's not looking very good for the old chap, is it? What will he get, Inspector? Life imprisonment? Yes. Well, I should have thought about three months would cover it in his case. <laughs> However, we are jumping to conclusions. Notice, the butler is left-handed. Whereas you, Miss Duck, ah! you are right-handed. Yeah, but you could have asked. You might have lied. And you... Look, Drake, before you attempt to karate kick me in the mouth, I'd like to own up to being right-handed too. So am I, so am I. Me too. That's very interesting. Well, Inspector, put us out of our misery. Was the murderer left-handed or right-handed? How the hell should I know? The old woman was shot! <sighs> what, Sergeant? Yes, sir. Here's the reason for my headache. Someone's been spiking my drink. <laughs> Get that fingerprinted, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Thank 
something very strange going on around here, and I am going to get to the bottom of it. What's that through there? Uh, that's the coal cellar, Inspector. Oh, the coal cellar, eh? Yes. You must think I was born yesterday. <laughs> Happy birthday for yesterday, Inspector. Oh, it seems that legendary mind of yours is letting you down again, Drake. Say that again. I said... It seems that legendary mind of yours is letting you down again, Drake. Mr. Gremlin, how long have you been having an affair with Miss Duck? How did you know? The love bite on your neck, it matches her teeth exactly. <laughs> You're an observant man, Drake. It's my job to be observant. And now I suppose you'd like to know how it comes to be in this wheelchair. What wheelchair? <laughs> yes, well, before you ask, it was a gunshot wound. But it was an accident and it was a long time ago. You see, I'd left my gun leaning against the gate. Some damn fool animal brushed against it. It went off and... You may as well tell him, Victor. Inspector, he was shot by a rabbit. <laughs> I'm more interested in your relationship, Miss Duck. Oh, well, I suppose there's no point denying it. Do you lie to protect him? No. That's a lie. Be quiet, I'm trying to protect you. <laughs> I see. Observe. Acute myopia. Acute what, sir? Short-sightedness, Mrs Greasegun. This man can see no further than his outstretched arm. The inspector's quite right. After the incident behind the bike shed, I started going blind. <laughs> Just as she said I would. All these years I've learned to hide my disability. How did you know, Inspector? How did you know, Inspector? You're wearing odd shoes. <laughs> one black, one green. I could just be weird. <laughs> You're that as well. Is any of this relevant? My affair with Miss Duck, Butler's bad eyesight? Clues! Small clues, but nevertheless significant. My job is to piece the clues together to form the picture of a murderer or murderess. Tell me, Mr. Handgrenade, have you got any arms? Yes, here they are. Very amusing. Shall we try that again? Have you got any guns? Guns? Yes, guns. You did say that you and wild rabbits often went out shooting each other? Ah, guns. Guns. It's been a long time since I've seen any of those around. I uh, guess, where do we keep those old guns? You remember, sir, they're in the arsenal, next to your bedroom. <laughs> yes, well, thank you, guest. Ah, Sergeant Blood, I'd like you to see the, take the butler here to see the arsenal. Ooh, football fan, eh? Who they play? <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, just go and search for guns, will you, upstairs, and take him with you. Yes, sir, come on, you. If you ask me, Drake, you're getting absolutely nowhere with this investigation. Yes, well, I didn't ask you, Mr. Gammy Leg. Inspector Drake! First of all, my name is Gagarin, not Grit Sniffer or Glue Wagon or Gonad. Secondly, this is my house, and it's my mother that's been murdered, and I'm not having you or your ridiculous buffoon of a sergeant coming in here ordering me about. Now, get this! One more disagreeable word out of either of you. And police or no police, I shall take my stick to your concrete skull and I'll belt your brains out! What did he say you'd do us, sir? Belt our brains out, Sergeant. But there's nothing you need worry about. <laughs> <laughs> I am prepared to overlook that little outburst, Mr. Gonorrhea, on account of the fact that you're... <laughs> account of the 
fact that you're a little upset. <laughs> uh, sir? I found yes, this, sir. Good Lord, Sergeant. Stay hey, on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Well, it appears you're in the clear, Mr. Gunslinger. This gun has not been fired for years. Doubt if it even still works. <laughs> Come, Sergeant. We've got a couple of things to look for. <laughs> Like, sir. I think you'll know them when you see them, Sergeant. <laughs> uh, sir? Bigger than that. Don't be ridiculous, Drake. May have gone too far. Sergeant, take a look. <laughs> nice weather we are having. Oh, yes, so very nice for the, the time of year. Mm. And just who is your next victim going to be? Don't I know you? No. Don't I know you? No. No one knows me. Oh, a likely story. Take off that pathetic disguise. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's you. So, it's you. So, it's you. <coughs> yes. <coughs> Who the hell is it? <laughs> that, Inspector, is the reason Mr. Butler started to go blind. A young lady by the name of Mary Ship. Mary Ship, the vicar's daughter. What were you doing with that gun? Steady, man, steady! Right in the fork, girl. I'll question her. What were you doing with that gun? Take your filthy hands off me! Go and wash them first. He's the one I'm after. Do you know what he did to me? Yes. yes. Oh, how embarrassing. <laughs> well, anyway, anyway, ever since then, I, I've been, I vowed I'd get even with him. <clears throat> what are you doing, sir? I'll burn you up. <laughs> <laughs> This poor child has suffered beyond all human imagination. She has served the penalty for her sins. Hallelujah. <laughs> Promise me you will never attempt to kill this man again and you may go free. Believe me, he served his penalty and it's been a stiff one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bye. 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 Don't Bye. get the gun, miss. <laughs> Thanks. You can wake up now. She's gone. I'm a monster. No, just a well-built eight-year-old. <laughs> so, Inspector, he's back to the drawing board. Admit it, you failed. It just doesn't add up. <laughs> Something's missing. Something is not quite right, Sergeant. Sir? Should we go over it again? Right, <laughs> Something's missing. Something is not quite right, Sergeant. Sir? Nope, it wasn't any better that time. <laughs> 
Don't take this personally, Spectre Drake, but you're a moron. Steady on, Gagarin. Drake is doing his best. So we're all quite right, Mr. Bricker Brack. We're quite used to that sort of abuse, you know. I just take it in my stride. Oh, are you all right, Steve? Steve? I'm fine, Miss Duck. Never better. But what have we here? It seems we have found our murder weapon. It's a gun. Yes, Mrs. Garbage, a gun. Just as the forensic boy said. That's incredible. Oh, they're very rarely wrong these days. No, it's incredible. It should lie there for need two days and none of us notice it. <laughs> but was right. Do you think it was planted there? No, it was lying on the surface of the carpet. <laughs> no, I mean, do you think someone put it there? What well, how else do you think it got there? By bus? <laughs> Sergeant Plot, I am about to reveal the identity of our murderer. Our murderer, sir? Have we been murdered? Uh. <laughs> it's just an expression, Sergeant. Inspector Drake, if it means I'll never see you again, then take me away, lock me up, I'll confess to anything. You can confess all you like, but the fact is, Mr. Gaginbrick, I know that no one in this room killed the old woman. Ah, the butler. Just in time. <laughs> Take a seat. Please, all of you, take a seat. And I shall reveal to you everything that happened last night. Well, did you spot all the clues? And if you did, there's a job waiting for you down at Scotland Yard. Mind you, the vacancy left by the world's greatest detective isn't going to be an easy one to fill. Ha! That if there is a vacancy. That's if this is indeed Inspector Drake's last case. Confused? Not half as much as me, you're not. <laughs> but as I was saying earlier, murder's a funny old business. You mustn't believe everything you hear. You mustn't always expect a murderer to tell the truth. And above all, you've got to know who's who. Now, unfortunately, this is where it starts to get a bit uh, complicated like. So, if you're still baffled, don't worry. Inspector Drake's got it all worked out, and all you've got to do is sit back, listen, and try to learn a little bit more. But before you do, just let me give you one more little hint. When you've worked it out, and you know exactly who did it, it's time to change your mind. Oh look, it's getting dark, just like it was on April the 1st. It's nine o'clock. If we hurry, we'll just be in time to witness a murder. Here you are, Mother, your usual. Thank you, Vincent. Victor, Mother. What? It's Victor, Mother. What is? Uh, my name, Mother. I'm perfectly capable of remembering my own son's name. Thank you, Vincent. Oh! Something wrong, Mother? I have the most dreadful head. I've always said so. <laughs> Ah, ah, guess, uh, Mrs. Gagarin has a headache. Uh, uh, please go and get her some aspirin. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, look, Mother, it's a lovely evening outside. Why don't you take a walk in the garden? Do your headache a power of good. 
Yes, Vincent. I think I will. Good. Here. After all, I'd hate to get blood on my Persian rug. But what about the butler? Or the cook? No, the butler. Good point. <laughs> Never mind. Any moment now. <laughs> Any moment now, I'll come through that door and say, excuse me, sir, but we appear to have no aspirin in the house. Excuse me, sir, we appear to have no aspirin. <laughs> in the house. In the house. <laughs> you surprised me, guest. Never mind. Pop next door and borrow some from the chemists. Yes, sir. Right, now he's... <laughs> <laughs> Right, now he's gone for at least half an hour. What about the cook and the gardener? Don't worry, we have no cook or gardener. Mother sat them both this morning. They were found canoeing again. Canoodling, darling. Well, same thing. Try telling that to the Eskimos. Never mind, let's get this thing over with. Here's to a successful business, Miss Duck. Here's to being a free man again, Mr. Butler. And here's to a rich inheritance, so richly deserved. Hello? Who's there? I know there's someone there. soon with the aspirin. Won't do her much good anymore. You two, drag the body into the cloisters, then you'd better get back to your quarters. You mean we're reinstated? As far as I know, murder is not a sackable offence. Now get moving. Alison, wind the clock forward half an hour. That damn butler's going to have a count to account for his time. <laughs> what do we do now? Now we phone the police. Are you mad? Yes. Oh. But that's got nothing to do with this phone call. I think it's about time I pledge my annual donation to the police board. Chief Inspector Bastard, please. Oh, I see. When will he be back? That's no good. Give me the sergeant on duty. Darling, we've just murdered your mother, and now you're calmly pledging money to buy more tracker dogs. I'm getting out of here. Oh, no, you don't. We've got a game of bridge to finish. Ah, Sergeant! Victor Gagarin here. I'm sorry to trouble you so late, but I've done something terribly wrong. Forgot to pledge my annual donation to the police ball. Shall we say a thousand pounds? A thousand pounds? Just, let's call it your final instalment. Hand it over, Scuttler. It's your filthy money. Ah, oh, good. I feel much better now, Sergeant. Now I can sleep. Good grief, is that the time? Three minutes past ten? <laughs> better let you get back to work. Duck. Yes, what is it? No, duck, you idiot. <laughs> Sergeant, Sergeant, come quickly. You might... It's my mother. She's been shot. Come quickly. Uh, uh, bring help. I must go. Well... Now I've got the perfect alibi. And the butler's got some explaining to do. Relax, the police are on their way. <laughs> and that's the way that a poor old lady screws A.L. in the gravel. 
but it wasn't Alexander Guest, oh no. Nor Alison Duck, you see, it was A double L. Cause they all did it. All that is. Except the butler. Okay, okay Sergeant, you're, you're too clever by half, but you'll never take, take me alive. alive. Okay, drop your guns. <laughs> so you're not a real butler after all. That's right. <laughs> Inspector Drake. <laughs> Been working on this case for months. You all right, Sergeant? Just a few egg wounds, sir, but, <laughs> but I understand it. If you're Inspector Drake, then who's that other chap? You mean me? <laughs> My, you lost weight, sir. It must be the worry. As I said, I knew that no one in this room killed the old woman because the old woman was not dead. Mother, Gagarin. That's right. Four out of the five bullets were stopped by this bulletproof vest, kindly <laughs> provided by Inspector Drake. <coughs> Would you care to sit down, Mrs. Gagarin? I'd rather not, thank you, Sergeant Blood. <coughs> Which one of you swans shot me in the bottom? That'll be me, Mrs. Gagarin. My eyesight isn't what it used to be. I was aiming for your head. Uh, Mother, can I just say how pleased I am that I didn't really kill you? Oh, what a comfort it is to have such a loving son. I'll call my lawyer in the morning and have you put back in my will. You mean I wouldn't have inherited a penny? That's right, but that's all in the past. I'll call him and tell him to leave everything to Vincent. Uh, Victor, Mother, make sure it's Victor. And there'll be one million pounds for you, Mr. Butler. One million? Yes, one thousand pounds a week for twenty years. I'm paying it all back. W what about the interest? <laughs> Kiss my ass, Mr. <laughs> Butler. Billy will be fine. I'd advise against it personally. Mrs. Gagarin told me weeks ago that she expected an attempt on her life. The only things we didn't know were who, how, and when. But with Mrs. Gagarin playing the bungling detective, and with me working undercover as the butler, I knew it wouldn't be long before the culprits exposed themselves. I underestimated you, Drake. I thought you were a fool. That is exactly what you were supposed to be. And then, of course, there's uh, <coughs> the attempted murder of Mr. Cook. But he was going to tell you everything. I had to shut him up. You? But you loved him. A filthy little gardener with one shirt. Never. I don't understand. And he was a messy eater. That was blood. It was tomato soup. It was blood. It was tomato soup. But the sergeant said... I know the sergeant said, but it was tomato soup. I saw him spill it. And I could never love a messy eater. Nope, there's only one man that I've ever loved. Isn't that right? Sergeant Plod? The, the Dutchman! Dutchman. <laughs> That's right! <laughs> <laughs> nice one, Van. That moron act had me fooled. I thought you really were a policeman. <laughs> ever thought of joining the force full time, Mr. Red? Oh, we need men of your calibre. Well, Mr. Drake, I've heard lots about the big police horses with the strong rippling muscles, the long flowing manes, and the huge... Yes, well, thank you, Mr. Rent. Oh, we'll let you know. I'll mention it to the Chief Inspector. <laughs> no need, Cecil. I heard everyone. <laughs> Chief Inspector <laughs> Bastard! <laughs> I came over as soon as I heard the news. Okay, bring him in. Mr. Cook! No. I've examined his fingers. They're no greener than yours or mine. This is not Cook the gardener, but after 15 years, he had to be here at the end. I'm sorry, Mr. Gagari. They made me do it. 
Sydney show for my old butler. Correct. <laughs> and thank you for bringing him over, Mr. and Mrs. <laughs> Chemist. Ah, oh. oh, Drake, something from you from the chaps at the yard when they heard I'd sacked you. Thank you very much. That's another case wrapped up. <laughs> <laughs> OK, take them away. Why have you got that? I thought this was as good a place as any to hold the police ball. <laughs> Tell me this is all one bad joke. This, this is all one bad joke. Thank you. Go on, take them away. But wait, Inspector. There's just one thing I don't understand. Gardener's the cook. Cook's the gardener. Guest the butler, butler the guest. But now you're saying that Sergeant plods the Dutchman who's having an affair with Gardener the cook. While guest the butler, no, actually, in fact, butler the guest is really butler the scuttler, and guest the butler is Inspector Drake, who's turned out to be Mrs. Gagarin, who are the next door neighbours of Mr. and Mrs. Chemist who are holding Gardener the cook, who's really Chauffeur, the butler. Right? <coughs> Could you go over it once again? <laughs> <laughs> There's just one thing I don't understand. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> what is the cook? No. Is well, he... Don't you understand? I don't know. It's all right. I don't. Well, you don't understand. <laughs> okay. I feel my guitar has been hoisted. But in that case, who are you?
we'll see, Mr. Fudgerigar, we'll see. Take the stand. Got it. Right. Do you promise to tell the old truth, the truth, and lots, lots of truth, and more truth than you can shake a stick at? I do. You say you were being black now by Mrs. Greedy Guts? Yes, the old bag was taking me for a thousand pounds a week. No further questions. You, Mrs. Gardell. Me? Yes, you. Come on, woman. Take the stand. Tell us your story and take it from the beginning. I, I was born the daughter of a poor farmer. Your father had no money. Oh, no, he had lots of money, but he was a terrible farmer. And when my father drank incessantly and continually beat me. Oh, a violent alcoholic. No, no, he drank water and beat me at chess. Come on. All I had to my name were my old dishcloths and the clothes I stood up in. And the clothes I went out in and a low cut dress for special occasions. Oh, and a cheeky little Italian off the shoulder number. Um, a Land Rover, a few baubles, and the good fortune to be the first ever who's jackpot winner. <laughs> Poor creature. So where did you become in the employee of Mrs. Gagari? A terrible misfortune. I put everything on a horse and lost it. Ah, so you brought that in lady? No, no, I strapped it to a horse and it ran away. <laughs> and you haven't seen you all since? No, though I have been doing the rounds of all the wealth and estates, checking the stables wherever I go. Who runs the stables here? The Dutchman. Not, Not the, the Dutchman? Dutchman. Yes. Yeah, what's his name, this Dutchman? Van. The full name? Truck Van Rental. <laughs> Tell me, can we speak to him? I uh, sacked him, Sergeant, a week ago. Oh, then why is that? He's mean, he is, just because...